Tonight, four people arrested and charged in Port Pirie after stolen credit cards were used to make multiple purchases. And after three decades of service, Corn's GP farewelled at Town Hall as he heads into retirement. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Four people have been arrested in Port Pirie after allegedly using stolen credit cards to make multiple purchases at local businesses. Following an investigation, SAPOL tracked down four main culprits who, between them, are facing 33 counts of deception. A 32-year-old and 29-year-old woman fronted Port Pirie Magistrates Court today the 31-year-old man from Risdon Park has his court date set for next Thursday, while a 34-year-old man has been bailed to appear in court on January 13. Police have managed to locate a number of victims, but they're sure there's more out there. If you or anyone you know has been affected, contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 or report it online. Spencer Golf businesses are continuing to receive top honours, this time for their contribution to the state's exports. Workers at Yamba Aquaculture in Point Boston have been acknowledged at this year's Premier's Food and Beverage Awards for their outstanding work in the shellfish industry. From abalone to oysters, Yamba Aquaculture has been busy exporting some of the best products the Spencer Golf has to offer to the rest of the world. Now they are being recognised for their efforts. We're very proud um, to be the recipients of the, the uh, Premier's Food and Beverage Award uh, Export Award. Yeah, as a company, it's recognition for the uh, craftsmanship and the care that we take in uh, growing our product. Even through the darkest times of the pandemic, it didn't stop Yamba Aquaculture from exporting internationally. All while following the strict COVID safety rules, of course. Very important for abalone and, and kept exporting all the way through the pandemic. So, you know, that's always a significant challenge when we know uh, international supply chains were, you know, in some instances very difficult to access. The farm here in Port Lincoln is busy harvesting ahead of the Christmas rush. Exports go to the US, um, to the Bay Area and uh, all over North America. We also go to EU, Southeast Asia and Japan. Businesses like Yumba contributed a record $15.6 billion in South Australia's exports in the year 2021-22. That supports wealth creation, it supports jobs uh, and it keeps uh, the, whole, the whole show running so we're really grateful to them. Yumba Aquaculture setting their sight on more than just abalone with the goal of becoming Australia's leading aquaculture shellfish company. So this farm in particular, uh, based in Port Lincoln, is about a 250 tonne farm. As a group, we do about 750 tonnes of abalone. We also do about 350,000 dozen of oysters and about 350 tonnes of mussels. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Representatives of Goida Conservation Management Plan Advisory Committee travelled to the Copper Coast yesterday to learn more about Moonta's mining history, buildings and artefacts. The two councils hope to work together to protect and preserve their iconic sites. The day began at the Moonta Mines Railway Station, where visitors enjoyed a trip on the tourist train. We're talking about how we're going to start working together in terms of the World Heritage nomination for Moonta and Borough. And so today's a bit of a familiarisation tour for people from Goida Council and Borough to get to know the Moonta site. And there's plenty to see, from the Moonta Mines Museum to the conservation work. The Conservation Committee says the mines in Moonta and the mines in Borough have a similar backstory. Borough the same story in a way. Borough is the first chapter and really Moonta is a, a sequel. Uh, so at Borough, that's where the first Cornish miners were working and they started um, the copper mining in South Australia. Newly elected Mayor of Goida Council, Bill Gephard, was excited to learn about the World Heritage process and how the two councils can work together. Aiming to finish up with, with our World Heritage listing, which I'd envisage to be probably five years away, yeah. but it's in a pretty good space and it's good to work with another strong community town. 
The two councils will continue to work together to put the best case forward to the state and federal government for funding support. And a reminder that the Christmas Lights tram tour will begin Monday the 12th. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Corn's long-serving GP has officially retired after 30 years of serving the people of the Flinders Ranges. Self-described as one of the last old-style country doctors, Tony Liang Lloyd fought for years to keep regional health services afloat. A huge turnout at the Corn Town Hall on Thursday night to say thank you to a local legend. Dr Tony Leanne Lloyd hung up his stethoscope after running GP services in Corn since 1992. Now it's time to retire in style. I come from a background out of horses and the land, so I've got a small property here in Corn, and uh, that'll keep me busy until I die. Flinders Rangers Mayor Ken Anderson paid tribute to Dr Tony in one of his first official duties as mayor. Pretty well legendary around the region, uh, not only in the in the two towns in the district. Yeah, look, it's um, a really good send off, one of many, I'm sure. So we're uh, we're very happy to be able to put it on for the community. Sadly to say, I'm probably one of the last of the old style country doctors. Um, yeah, we need to keep vigilant and alert and maintain our hospital services in small country towns. Dr Tony has also spent years advocating for regional health services in Quorn, especially when they were under threat from cuts. You need a hospital to work out of. You need to be able to do procedural work uh, to make it uh, economically viable. So the hospital needs a doctor, the doctor needs a hospital. It cuts both ways. A locum service will be in place for a short period before the new permanent GP service is up and running. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, cans for cash in the far west. New South Wales return and earn scheme marks a milestone. And making Lee Creek more inclusive. New signage around local walking tracks now featuring two languages. Welcome back. New South Wales Return and Earn Scheme is celebrating half a decade in operation this week. Over the past five years, billions of containers have been returned, showing that recycling really does pay off in the long run. Ready to blow out the birthday candles. The Return and Earn Scheme is now at the age where the training wheels can come off the bike. Happy fifth birthday to Return and Earn, a scheme that has changed the way people in New South Wales think about recycling and think about their rubbish. Minister for Environment James Griffin says the milestone demonstrates just how passionate the people in New South Wales are about turning their trash into treasure. More than 8 billion bottles and containers returned, more than $800 million provided back to the community and more than $35 million given to charities across the state. Not only has it given back to the community, the scheme has also reduced drink container litter volume since it was introduced by the state government back in 2017. Minister Griffin calls it a great win. Most importantly, from an environmental perspective, it has delivered a 52% reduction in the litter and the waste of containers that are found out there in our environment. So a, a great win for the community, for business and for the environment. Earlier this year, the scheme also added wine and spirit bottles, as well as large containers. This would result in an additional 400 million eligible bottles and containers recycled each year, including 233 million glass bottles. The scheme expansion will boost recycling rates, reduce landfill and supercharge the push towards a circular economy in the state. The return and earn automated depot at Channing's Broken Hill is open 8.30 to 4, Monday to Friday, and until midday on Saturdays. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. If you're around Lee Creek, you may notice a few changes to some of the town's signs. Some signs around the walking tracks have been made bilingual in a boost for local Indigenous language speakers. And a warning, this report may contain footage and images of deceased persons. The remote town of Lee Creek is continuing to embrace its Aboriginal culture, with the placement of more bilingual signs around the popular Akura Trail at Aruna Dam. 
the start of a, a really significant part of an important murder or um, history story, creation story. Organised by the Lee Creek Area School and the Towns Community Progress Association, the signs are in Adimathana language. Seeing the signs for the first time was an emotional moment for Aboriginal community officer Noel Wilton. It's taken us a while to get it up and to get this walking trail going. And with the school support, well, I found it's very, well, I'm just, I don't know what to say. The bilingual signs are also part of expanding the Adimathana language to the younger generation of local Aboriginal people. Adimathana is a revival language, means it's, it's spoken by some of the elders, but not by the young people. And so the students are really valuing the fact that they are able to learn their own language um, as a part of their school curriculum. Noel hopes other towns like Port Augusta and Roxby Downs will look into adopting bilingual signage in some areas. That'd be good to see that sort of thing happening in them sort of places. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Impressed by the high standards. The Mid North Fire Station awarded for its work. And it's a rite of passage for most Aussie authors. Yet another book chat is coming to Broken Hill. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf Nightly News this Friday. Four regional MFS stations have come out on top after being assessed in things like safety, rescue and incident responding. Kadena residents will be reassured to know they're in capable hands with their home station taking out the top prize. Kadena MFS officers have a long history in the workforce and say it feels good to be acknowledged. There's about 200 retained firefighters in the state and this year we've knocked them off. I've been uh, with Metropolitan Fire Service for about 40 years. I've spent most of my time in Metropolitan Adelaide fire stations but I, I've re recently um, transferred to regional operations. Michael says working in the regions comes with added challenges and rewards, as regional firefighters have full-time employment outside of the MFS. It's great to see their commitment and passion uh, for the MFS because they respond in their um, spare time. And the officers definitely aren't lacking in the fitness and skills departments, coming first place in the annual assessment process. A vehicle had uh, impacted on a building and uh, electrical uh, cable had fallen across the vehicle. So the crew had to deal with a very complex exercise. Kadena MFS is currently recruiting and encourage anyone interested to take action. It's actually been a fantastic way of life. And um, yeah, we've actually got to thank the employers of the, of the crew as well, and the wives and family. It's a huge commitment by them. For more information, visit the MFS website. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Author Geraldine Starr is heading back to Broken Hill, kind of. The storyteller spent time in the far west while researching her new book and has organised a virtual meetup to discuss the riveting content between the pages. Inspired by the outback and where she grew up, author Geraldine Starr hit the road to research her new book, She Oak. Having lived in the, uh, on, near the Haye Plain, I could see the beauty of the landscape and how it sort of gets into your soul. Described as adventure, the story sees two people on a road to redemption. They travel across the Haye Plain, through Broken Hill and onto Adelaide. The author wanting to break stereotypes. Because in the past, women on, in the country were invisible and their role was not out there but now there's a lot of women farmers. Ms Starr enjoys studying the landscape of the far west and writing about her hometown. The research was wonderful and especially when I went to Broken Hill because I love Broken Hill and Broken Hill as um, for me is a quirky place. Fellow author Julie Jansen will be the moderator for the event and someone Ms Starr knows well. We have been a member of um, a group, a writer's group, and we have been giving feedback to each other over a, a number of years now. 
The event takes place Thursday, December 8. You can get tickets through Eventbrite. Or for more information, contact Broken Hill City Library. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Our local cricket experts tip who they think will win this weekend. And temperatures in the 40s. We'll have the weekend weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. Cricketers will be keen to hit the pitch tomorrow and Sunday after even more disruptions last weekend. Some of the leagues are heading into round three, while others are already gearing up for round eight. Hello and welcome to round seven of Port Pirie Cricket. After a couple of weeks of washouts, all sides will be keen to actually get a game of cricket in this weekend. This round starts with Southport taking on props at Memorial Oval with this match starting at 10.30. Props sit at the top of the table with just the one loss this season. Southport will decide that inflicted that loss and be looking for a repeat of that result. I'm tipping props. Over at Port Oval, it's Wandera hosting Port Germain from 12.30. Wandera find themselves in unfamiliar territory at the bottom of the ladder and will be desperate for a win. I'm tipping Port Germain. G'day and welcome to round three of Port Augusta Cricket. Uh, this week we see Corn take on South Augusta in um, Corn. This will be a very good match. Corn, uh, yeah, Corn have always been up there, but I'm going to lean towards South Augusta to win that match. The other match sees uh, West Augusta take on uh, Centrals at Etza. Uh, Westies uh, yet to win, so I'm going to lean towards uh, Centrals to win that match. So there are my two winners, South Augusta and Centrals. Excellent game of cricket in Broken Hill this weekend with undefeated sides North and West uh, meeting at the uh, Jubilee Oval. I suspect North's batting depth is a little bit better than West, but that West have done a uh, mighty job this year to remain undefeated. So I think it'll be a very close contest, but I think uh, North's batting depth may see them over the line and they should go on to remain undefeated and perhaps set themselves up as favourites uh, for this year's Premiership. In the other game, obviously uh, two sides that, that haven't won a game as yet in uh, South and uh, Centrals. Someone will be happy at the end of this game, um, but I suspect it may be Central because South are yet to prove that they've got the batting line up uh, to uh, post a winning score. Welcome to this week's Cricket Tips. This week sees Waybacks travel out to Wongaree to play Southern Air South. Southern Air South should be too strong in this game after absolutely annihilating Charlton last week. And in the other game, it's Tasmans and Todd River on Centenary. Tasmans uh, should be too strong in this match. They've uh, been playing some good cricket. Todd River yet to win a game, and I think Tasmans will be too strong in this one. Thanks for listening to the Portland Cricket Tips. Always a pleasure, Andrew. Thank you. Well, time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, it's starting to heat up. It sure is, Matty. Temperatures in the 40s are forecast in places like Woodna, Wyala, Port Augusta and Cooper Pedy. But as for today, it was just about picture perfect. Blue skies across the region, not too warm or too cold. Wyala reached 30 degrees this afternoon. 32 was the top in Port Pirie, 31 degrees in Cleve. Looking more broadly at today's weather map now is around 33 in Port Augusta, 34 in Woodna. Broken Hill reached 29 and a half at around a quarter to three. Bit cooler in the capital today, 23-24 in Port Lincoln. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a low pressure trough is set to move over western waters late Saturday, then across the remaining South Australian coastline on Sunday. A ridge of high pressure will follow the trough and remain across waters to the south of the Bay for most of next week. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Northeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas below a metre and south to southwesterly swell around a metre. Port Lincoln sunny and 30 degrees tomorrow down to 15 tonight. A bit warmer in Cleve, 36 on Saturday. Woodner will be just shy of 40 degrees, a sunny top of 39. The Steel City will be a balmy 34 degrees tomorrow. Warmer in Port Augusta, 38. Kadena a sunny top of 34 to start the weekend. 36 is forecast for Port Pirie after an overnight low of 17 tonight. Clare set to reach a high of 
12, 32 degrees. Light winds around Broken Hill tomorrow, 33. Possible shower and storm in the Silver City overnight. Taking a look further through the week now, starting with Sunday's forecast, and it's set to be 42 degrees in Port Augusta. Port Pirie also set to crack the 40s. A windy top of 39 on the way for Wyala, 39 in Woodner as well, but with partly cloudy conditions. Sunny and 39 in Cooper Pedy, 35 in Broken Hill. Moving on to Monday's outlook now and a pretty dramatic shift compared to Sunday's temperatures. Just 23 in Wyala, 26 in Port Augusta and Port Pirie. Kadena partly cloudy and 24. Port Lincoln partly cloudy as well, 20 degrees. 27 in Woodna, 37 in Cooper Pedy. And finally, taking our first look at how Tuesday is looking. Sunny in Broken Hill, Port Pirie and Kadena temperatures in the mid to high 20s. 21 in Port Lincoln, 25 in Wyala, partly cloudy and 30 in Port Augusta and 38 in Cooper Pedy. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. I'll see you soon with an update. It's back to you, Maddie. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Friday. I'm Madeline Kerr. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. We'll see you Monday for our final week of the year before returning to your screens in January. But I'll have updates a little later. Until then, enjoy your evening and your weekend. Good night.